G'day there, Ray Corcoran here. So in this week's video, we're gonna go over the top five ETFs in Australia as of 2023 based on market cap. So ETFs are an increasingly popular way for people to invest at the moment, especially low cost diversified index funds are becoming very, very popular. People really like them because you can get exposure to the stock market without having to be an individual stock picking expert. For a lot of people, picking individual stocks can be quite challenging and it is. And some people find it much easier to have more of a set and forget approach and just investing in say, the ASX 300, which is the top 300 companies in Australia, or stuff like the S&P 500, which is the top 500 companies in America. Some of the benefits of ETFs include diversification. So rather than betting on say one company like Apple, which could go up or down quite a bit, you bet on a group, which is a little bit less risky because the chances of all of those companies tanking is much less likely than one company going up or down by quite a bit. A number of ETFs are also significantly lower cost in terms of fees you have to pay compared to say actively managed funds. With a lot of these actively managed funds, there's been a number of studies that show that if you factor in how much more their fees are, even if they beat the market, the average of the market by a little bit, their fees are so high that it often negates the performance gains. And just a disclaimer, I'm not a financial advisor, so I'm not recommending that you buy any of these particular things. And also it's important to understand that just because a fund has a lot of funds under management, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's gonna be a great fund for you to invest in. So don't just like blindly follow the herd when it comes to investing just because everybody else is investing in it. But with that said, let's get into it. So coming in at number five is IOZ. I don't know how to say these or what the right way to say it is, but it's IOZ is their ticker symbol. So this is the iShares ASX 200 ETF. At the time of filming, it had a market cap of $3.73 billion. And this basically will track the ASX 200, which is the top 200 companies in Australia. A lot of people see the ASX 200 as a good barometer for the overall health of the economy because they're kind of the big hitters. If the big hitters are doing well, then it's probably, and you know, lots of smaller businesses are obviously connected. Everything in the economy is all connected. So if the big players are doing well, then that's usually a good sign. If the big players are doing bad, we could be in trouble. And overall, larger companies are typically seen as being less volatile, whereas some of the smaller companies, you may see them shoot up, but they can also equally shoot down. In terms of the MER, which is the management expense ratio, it's 0.09. So that basically means that if I have 10 grand invested with them, the fee that they will charge me to manage that is $9. So relatively low cost. And many of these ones that we'll go through today are relatively low cost. Uh, you know, you can pay anywhere up to 1% or 2% or even higher to manage your funds. So if you can have something that only costs you a few dollars per $10,000, to invest, then typically, you know, that can be a really good thing long term. One thing to note though, that some people do prefer the AdaShares equivalent, which is called uh, A200. This has a very, very similar profile, but it has a uh, lower expense ratio of uh, 0.07. In terms of the top five holdings for this particular one, so in the ASX 200, the top five companies, they kind of do change here and there, but it's BHP, which is, you know, uh, resources. You've got uh, CSL, which is a healthcare business, Westpac, NAB, and Commonwealth Bank as well. So you can kind of see that, you know, a number of the ones, you know, most of the Australian top 200 companies are gonna be in resources, minerals, uh, and financial services. They're very heavily weighted towards that. And what we'll do now is put the performance on the screen so you can kind of see the sort of rough performance over um, the past few years. Next up, we have IVV, which is the BlackRock iShares uh, S&P 500 ETF. Quite often investors will be biased towards their own home country in terms of where they invest. But if someone is looking to get exposure to the US market, which is obviously you know, a huge market, many people do look for a S&P 500 ETF, which gives them you know, broad exposure over the biggest 500 companies in America. It has a market cap of $4.8 billion uh, and a uh, management expense ratio of 0.04. And in terms of the top five holdings, it's uh, Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Google slash Alphabet, uh, and Berkshire Hathaway, which is Warren Buffett's company. So you can kind of see that for the American top 500 companies, they're very heavily weighted towards tech. You know, they have obviously, you know, like all the major big tech companies. Then followed by healthcare. So you've got like stuff like Johnson & Johnson, CVS, um, and then also uh, some of the financial ones like all the banks, Visa, MasterCard, that sort of stuff. In terms of performance, I'll kind of put that on screen now so you can sort of check that out and kind of see the different performance uh, of this particular fund over time. Coming in number three is we have STW, which is an ASX 200 product. So that is from uh, SPDR. 
And basically this one does track the top 200 companies in Australia as well. A bit of a fun fact, this one was actually the first ETF to list in Australia in 2001. So, you know, don't really know how that helps your investing journey, but the more you know. In terms of market cap, it's $4.87 billion. And in terms of expense ratio, it is 0.13%. Uh, so for every $10,000 that you invest, you'll have to pay $13 in fees. And one thing I like to note here is, you know, for me personally, while uh, fees do add up over time, so you should take that seriously, I also, on the flip side, think that you shouldn't spend too much time agonizing over a dollar here, a dollar there. Because yes, while it does add up long-term, some people put way too much focus on a few small dollars. Meanwhile, they're not getting promoted at work or they're not growing their business, which would make them, you know, many multiples of that in the short term. So just keep that in mind with any of these expenses. Definitely try and get something that is not super high fees unnecessarily, but also you know look at where your time is best spent and your effort is best spent. And in terms of top five holdings, same as before, BHP, NAB, Westpac, Commonwealth Bank, uh, CSL. So they're top five holdings at this point in time. Coming in at number two, in terms of the uh, most funds under management in terms of ETFs in Australia, we have VGS. That's the Vanguard uh, MSCI or, or MISCI, which I call it, uh, international shares. So basically what this is, is a uh, product that has, it's an ETF that covers um, basically the whole world. It's like a whole world ETF, excluding Australia. So this is kind of convenient because if you already have an Australian you know, say you've got uh, Vanguard Australian shares and you're sort of got exposure to the Australian market. If you wanna get exposure everywhere else and you're already covering Australia, this is kind of a nice one to go with it. Now, I can't recommend that you do that, but this is some of the rationale that people may use when they're selecting their ETFs. An alternative to this one is IOO. You'll notice that there are a number of ETF providers that all provide very, very similar products. It's just like if you go to a bakery or whatever, they are all selling, you know, different types of breads, but you know, they're all, you know, selling essentially very similar things. So just have a look at, you know, the different costs between them as well, because you might be able to find one ETF that pretty much covers the same stuff as somebody else, but their expense ratio is a little bit lower, so you can save a bit of money there and obviously get better, potentially better returns long-term. In terms of how many companies in this particular world ETF, minus Australia, um, it's about 1,465 companies. Um, it is about 70% weighted to America, so you know it is uh, largely American, then followed by uh, Japan, which is around six or so percent, followed by a number of like developed countries in Europe, basically, which are all like three, four, 5% um, of the entire ETF. So you've got stuff like Apple, Berkshire Hathaway, a lot of the companies that you may see, uh, you will see at the top of the S&P 500, but it's not exclusively American based, obviously. So you do get a bit of exposure to other countries, other developed countries um, across the world. In terms of market cap, it's uh, $5.08 billion. And in terms of expense ratio, it is 0.18%. According to Vanguard's website, they think this product is better suited to buy and hold long-term investors that want international exposure, they want diversification, and they can handle a bit of volatility you know, with the global share market. And coming in at number one is VAS, Vanguard Australia in shares. This is the big daddy of them all on the, in terms of Australian ETFs. They have significantly more funds invested than pretty much anyone else at $12.41 billion invested. And they've had a huge amount of inflows as well, uh, especially in the last couple of years. In addition to that, VAS is a bit of a mainstay for anyone that invests in ETFs. You know, lots of people obviously invest in it. They added actually $3.2 billion in funds under management in 2022. So there's quite a lot of money coming into that at the moment. A lot of people are very, very bullish on the Australian stock market just generally, and VAS is kind of an easy way um, to invest in there without paying much in fees either. In terms of what VAS tracks, it is the Australian uh, share market, so the ASX 300. So you may have noticed that some of these uh, previous ETFs have covered the ASX 200 and 300. If you were curious, I did some research and there hasn't seemed to be many dramatic differences in people who invest in the ASX 200 versus the ASX 300. I was very curious about, you know, does the company's 201 to 300, for example, make much of a positive difference? Uh, and the answer so far seems like it is no. Now, that is not to say that in future that they may diverge more, but at this point, you know, it doesn't seem to be a dramatic difference between you investing in the, the ASX 200 versus 300. And VAS has a uh, management expense ratio or MER of 0.1%. So it's, you know, it's low fee. It gets, uh, in terms of top five holdings, 
you know, same as before, as the ones that, are a that target the ASX 200, it's gonna be BHB, CSL, NAB, Westpac, and Combank. So there you have it, there are the top five ETFs in terms of funds under management in Australia. As I said before, speak to a professional if you do wanna make any investment decisions because uh, listening to people on YouTube or the internet is a horrendous idea. But other than that, hope you found the video useful. If you have any thoughts, comments, anything below, please let me know and uh, I'll see you on the next video. Cheers.